Okay, so we're going to start with the cylinder. Cylinder is going to be a little bit different than what you guys have known before for a cylinder. Definition of a cylinder. A cylinder is a surface that consists of all lines parallel to a given line and pass through a given plane curve. Okay, so I know that that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so I will tell you in simpler terms what that means to us. What that means to us is that when we are in three space, the equation of a cylinder has only two different variables. So a cylinder to us in three space is any equation that has two variables rather than three. So for our first example, an example of a cylinder would be the equation z equals x squared. So this is three space, only two equations. We did a little bit of sketching these before. Do you guys remember how I suggested that you sketch them? I suggested doing two space first and then going to three space. So I would suggest that you still do that here. Here we are plotting x versus z. It's a parabola. Okay, so what this shows us then, because y is not involved, when we move to three space, we're going to be taking this parabola and moving it down the y-axis. Does that make sense? So it's going to end up looking something like this. I will tell you, I'm not an artist, so I will do the best I can to draw these. If you can do a better job, great. Okay, I'm going to start by sketching this parabola where just y equals 0. So that's this one. And then this needs to continue along the y-axis. you get the gist of what I'm going for in my picture? Yes? I mean, I showed you in real life. So anyway, this is called a parabolic cylinder. So that's why I said it's not exactly the cylinder that you guys know. This doesn't look like a typical cylinder. This is still a cylinder, though, because it only has the two variables. So we'll do one more example before we go on to quadric surfaces. Next example is y squared plus z squared equals 1. So again, sketch it in two space first. y versus z, doesn't matter where you put them, but it is a circle. OK, so then what's going to happen here? Because x is not involved, x, or because x is not in the equation, x is going to be the axis that we move this circle along. So we're going to take the circle, move it along the x-axis, and what are we going to get? A cylinder. Yeah, the cylinder that you guys typically know. So we're going to have this circle. We might have a circle out here. So that is our cylinder. So this should not be new, because we did this, I think, the very first day, or the second day. You ready to get into more interesting graphs? Great. Next thing we're going to talk about is quadric surfaces. OK, quadric surfaces are graphs of second degree equations. that have three variables. So this is the case where it's second degree, it's in three space, we have all three variables. So here is the most general equation, ax squared. 
add by squared, add cz squared, add dxy, add eyz, add fxz, add gx, add hy, add iz, add j equals zero. That's the most general equation. Now, this is not helpful in any way, shape, or form. So, don't worry about it. I'm not going to ask you to memorize this, and I'm not going to give you any equation that looks like that. We're going to look at, I think, six general shapes. Okay. This is where our drawing skills really need to be good. Okay, so first example, or example number three, but it's our first quadric surface. It's going to be the surface z equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do with each of these equations is I'm going to show you different ways to analyze the equation so we know some things about the graph. Uh, I think that's a better idea than just memorizing everything. First thing I want you to notice here is that z is always going to be positive. x squared, y squared are positive, so z is always going to be 0 or bigger. So that's helpful to us. We know that our graph is only going to be the top. Now, what you've done in the past when you didn't know how to graph an equation is you just plugged in numbers and then you plotted points. Now, you can see here that's not going to be very helpful because there's no way you're going to get the whole graph by plugging in enough points. So we will not be doing that. Instead, what we're going to be finding is we're going to be finding what are called traces. What a trace means is you pick values for one of the variables. So I'm going to start with z. If I choose z to be 0, that's going to give me 0 equals x squared plus y squared. What is that? Like if we were to graph this equation, what would it be? It's a point. Yeah, it's just the origin. So that gives us this point right here. Then it might be helpful to choose z to be 1. We get 1 equals x squared plus y squared. What is that? Circle. Okay. So then, at z equals 1, you're going to draw a circle with a radius of 1. You could choose z to be 2 or 3, but z equals 4 might be a little bit better. So we get 4 equals x squared plus y squared. Again, a circle, this time of radius 2. So these are called traces. Okay, so then... We should be able to see that this is going to keep happening. Anytime we pick bigger values of z, we're going to get bigger circles that just keep going up the z-axis. So this is what our surface ends up looking like. Can you picture that? It's like a parabola that's being revolved around the z-axis. Okay. Do you get the general idea of these? Okay, so here's what we're going to do then. I'm going to take you through all six shapes, and then we'll look at a few examples. Does that work? OK. So like I said, there are six general shapes. I'm going to give you the equation and the shape. We're going to talk about the intercepts. And we're going to talk about what those traces are going to look like. First general shape, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. OK, so it's a good general idea with any of these shapes that you find the intercepts. So our z intercept is going to be when we make x and y 0. If we make x and y 0, the z intercept will be plus or minus c. Same idea. If I make x 0 and I make z 0, my y intercept will be plus or minus b. And same idea for a, plus or, or x rather, plus or minus a, comma 0, comma 0. So this has six different intercepts. Okay. Now, when we did the traces up here, I chose z. Really, I could have made x a certain number. I could have made y a certain number. 
So there are three different chases if you make x some number, if you make y some number, if you make z some number. So if we make x some number, this is a positive number, we would probably move it over. And then you would have y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equal some number. What kind of shape would that be? An ellipse. Yeah, do you guys see that the same thing would happen with y and z? OK, so all three of these traces are all going to be ellipses. OK, so then if we look at graphing this, So if we graph our intercepts, we have that plus or minus a. So let's choose that to be somewhere. So maybe here is my a. So we have a point there, or we have points there. We also have our b's, that plus or minus b. So we have those intercepts. I'm just picking values of a and b, so keep in mind that we don't know what they are. Maybe c is here, that's plus or minus c. OK, we have a whole bunch of ellipses, though. So these points right here form an ellipse. Any pair of intercepts, so like the x and z intercepts, those will form an ellipse. The x and y intercepts will form an ellipse. The y and z intercepts will form an ellipse. So you need to keep finding all of those ellipses. So this is what our figure ends up looking like once you connect all of the ellipses. Can you guys picture this? It's kind of like a 3D oval. This figure is called an ellipsoid. OK. That's the first one. We have five more. So that's the first one. Second one, z squared over c squared is equal to x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. So again, we're going to talk about those intercepts and the traces. OK, intercepts, there's only one, and that would be the origin, 0, 0, 0. If I make x and y 0, the only way that can be the case is if z is 0 and keep going. For our traces, x can be some number, y can be some number, z can be some number. We start with z. That's going to be the easiest one. If I make z some number, what is my equation that I have left? What shape? If I make z some number, so I have x squared plus a squared plus y squared over b squared equals some number. That's an ellipse. OK, these two are going to be the same. If I make x some number, so I have y squared over b squared plus some number equals z squared over c squared, hyperbola. OK, here's what this one is going to look like. Whatever is the variable that's by itself is the axis that we will be using. This figure is going to form two different cones. One cone that opens up, one cone that opens down. Something like that, and then like that. So this one, shockingly, it's going to be called a cone. It might be called a, an elliptic cone sometimes. So it depends on what these are, if they're circles or if they're ellipses. 
So if you see elliptic cone, that means that all of these are ellipses rather than circles. Next one, exactly the same, except instead of this being squared, it's just to the first power. So z over c equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. So same intercept, 0, 0, 0. Looking at the traces, if z is some number, we still have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. So this will still be an ellipse. x and y being equal to some number, that changes. If I make x some number, I end up with a parabola. So those two both give us parabolas. So this is very similar to that example that we did, the example number three. Example number three, we did z equals x squared plus y squared. So it's going to give us a very similar shape. This, again, is the axis that we move along. So as we already saw, it looks something like this. This is called an elliptic paraboloid. So the paraboloid should make sense. You see a parabola shape. It's called elliptic. In the general form, these traces are going to be ellipses. Okay, halfway through the general shapes. Ready for the next ones? Great. Lucky for you on your homework, since it's on WebAssign, I can't actually ask you to sketch anything. So your homework is mostly going to be, this is the equation, pick the right shape. Your packet, I'm going to ask you to sketch them each, though. So you will have to sketch some of them. Here's your next one. We have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1. Intercepts you can find. I'm not going to find these right now. I'm going to just tell you what the traces are. If z equals some number, it's going to give us an ellipse. When x and y equal some number, it's going to give us hyperbolas. Okay, here's what this one is going to look like. First of all, this one negative, again, that's our axis. You're going to have a small circle at the origin. As you get further away from the origin, your circle is going to get bigger. So it looks something like this. Bless you. Can you guys picture what that is? This one is called a hyperboloid of one sheet. That one sheet is necessary because the next example we are going to do is a hyperboloid of two sheets. Here's how you remember the one sheet. One sheet has one negative. So when we get to two sheets, which we're going to do now, there's going to be two negatives. We have negative x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. This is a hyperboloid of two sheets. Two sheets because it has two negatives. The way to remember which one is the axis, it's always the one that's different. So one that, the one that's different here is z. It's the only positive one. This will be our axis then. Traces are the same as a hyperboloid of one sheet. Intercepts you can find yourself. We're going to have an intercept when z is positive c and when z is negative c. It's going to look something like this. So 
So this is a hyperboloid of two sheets. Ready for the last one? Okay, I left the best one for last. General equation is z over c equals x squared over a squared subtract y squared over b squared. Intercepts you can find on your own. When x and y are some number, you should be able to see you're going to get a parabola. When z equals some number, what are you going to get? x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals some number. What is that? Hyperbola. OK. This one is going to be the hardest one to draw. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I'm not an artist, okay? Stop making fun of my drawing. It is not a tank top. It's a saddle. Like a horse saddle. I'll show you out of the book since you guys don't like mine. as you get across the point that you're drawing a saddle. <laughs> it's hard to draw. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ready to do some examples? I'm taking that away. I'm sorry. Are you, no, you want me to leave it? You got to get it perfect? Yeah. Never gonna happen, so. <laughs> okay. It does kind of look like it gets it takes out So similar to what we did in example three where we found well we didn't find the intercepts, but we found the traces. I'm gonna take you through how I approach these problems. Yes. Oh, I didn't tell you. It's called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Isn't that a fun one? What's your favorite shape? That one? The hyperboloid of one sheet? Okay. This is the most interesting. That's the one that you have fun drawing. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk, to talk about like practically how do you draw these? How are you going to approach each problem? <laughs> First example, y equals x squared plus z squared over 4. Okay, what you could do is you could just memorize all of those shapes and all of their equations. Personally, I think it's, that's a waste of your time. So I wouldn't suggest you do that, but if you want to, go for it. This is the one that's different. That's going to tell you your axis. So our shape will be forming along the y-axis. 
first thing that you're going to find is any intercepts. In the case where we make x0 and z0, y has to be 0. In the case where we make x and y0, z has to be 0, etc. So your only intercept is at the origin. Next thing that you're going to do is you're con going to consider some of the traces. So y, I think, is the best one to start with. If we choose y equals 0, we get 0 equals x squared plus z squared over 4, which is just the origin. So that really wasn't that helpful. If we take y to be 1, what do we get? An ellipse. Okay, do we see that as we keep changing the values of y, we're going to keep getting ellipses? Okay, so that tells us as we go along the y-axis, we're going to get some ellipses. So let's start with that. Okay, we have that intercept of 0, 0, 0. When y is 1, we have an ellipse. The ellipse tells us in the x direction we're going to go 1, in the z direction we're going to go 2. Something like that. When y is negative 1, it's the same thing, since you're squaring it. Those should be the same. Mine aren't but yours should be. Let's now consider some x values. If we take x to be 0, we're going to end up with y squared equals z squared over 4. If we take the square root, we get plus or minus y equals plus or minus z over 2. What is that? Yeah, it's two lines that cross at an x. So you're going to consider positive y equals z over 2, that's a line. Negative y equals z over 2, that's a line with the opposite slope, opposite sign. So it's going to be lines that cross like this. As you change the value of x, you're still going to get those lines just moved a little bit. So you're getting something like this. Sorry, I know it's not great, but hopefully you get the point. So you're going to keep having these ellipses. Do you see what's happening? Two cones that are opening up along the y-axis. So. The one we did in the notes was like this, up and down because it was along the z-axis. Now we're along the y-axis, though. So again, this is called a cone. Each side, those are ellipses, so it's often referred to as an elliptic cone. OK, do you get the general idea of how to approach these? Yes? Okay, we have two other examples that I want us to do. You are also going to have to identify these quadric surfaces when they are not in the forms that I gave you. So for example, this next one, 4x squared, add 4y squared, add z squared, plus 8y minus 4z equals negative 4. So I did not give that to you in any form that you've seen. So what is your suggestion to get it in a form that's more useful to us? You're going to have to complete the square. OK, so 4x squared, we're not going to have to do anything there. Do you guys remember with completing the square, you want a positive 1y squared? OK, so for that y squared, I'm going to factor out a 4. I'm going to have to factor out a 4 from there. I'm going to leave myself space to complete the square.
completing the square here, I take 2 and I divide it by 2, I get 1. 1 squared is 1. Now, remember, though, that I factored out a 4. So to this side, I'm really adding 4. So I'm going to add 4 to the other side. Over here, I'm going to have to add 4, add 4 again. So we end up with 4x squared, add 4. Here, that's y plus 1 squared. And then z minus 2 squared equals 4. This is almost a form that we have seen. Form that we've seen, that needs to be a 1. So we're going to divide by 4 so that we have it set equal to 1. We get x squared plus y plus 1 squared plus z minus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. Okay, this I think is the easiest shape to identify. Can you guys tell before we even find anything what that's going to be? It's an ellipsoid. When they're all squared, all on the same side, all positive, it's going to be an ellipsoid. So if we find some intercepts, if I make x and y 0, z has to be 2. If I make x 0 and z 0, y has to be I make z 0, that ends up being 1, that'll be 0, so y has to be negative 1 then. If I make y and z 0, if I make y and z 0, here I'm going to get 1, here I'm going to get 1, so that does not give us any intercepts. So we have just those two intercepts. Okay, all of the traces are ellipses. Okay, the kind of vertex of the ellipse or the center of the ellipse is the point zero, negative one. Never mind, scratch that. Okay, let's start sketching. That 0, negative 1, 0. Negative 1 goes along the y-axis, so that's right there. 0, 0, 2 is right there. Okay. This point, 0, negative 1, 2, what I was trying to say about that is that's going to be the center of the ellipse. It's not actually part of it, but it's where the ellipse is centered. So that right there is the center. That tells us our next point is up here, over here. So this is the gist of how our ellipse is going to look. Ready for one more? Any questions? Okay, these are important. They might not seem that important, but not next chapter, really not the following chapter, but the last two chapters of Calc 3 are going to involve all of these different shapes. We're going to be setting up integrals with them to find volume, to find surface area, things like that. So it is important that you're able to recognize these and tell what they're going to look like. Last one. Z equals y squared over 4 minus x squared over 9. Oh, sorry. Okay. In terms of intercepts, the only intercept is 0, 0, 0. In terms of our traces, if we make x some number, we're going to have a parabola. 
So all of the x traces are parabolas. If we make y some number, same thing, we're going to get parabolas. If we make z some number, we're going to get hyperbolas. What figure is that where we're going to get some parabolas and some parabolas and some hyperbolas? Our favorite one, the hyperbolic parabola. Yes, it is. OK. I'm going to do a better job this time, I think. My picture on here is pretty good, so I'm going to try to get the same picture. OK, so you're always going to start with this parabola in the middle. Very stressful. Does that look better than my other one? I'm pretty proud of that one. That's pretty good. For a hyperbolic paraboloid, this is what I expect. I want to see your intercepts, I want to see the traces, and then just sketch a hyperbolic paraboloid. Yes? Are the sketches for these the same as my hyperbolic? Not for these, no. For any of the other five, yes, there should be some points that will show the magnitude and the position. Hyperbolic paraboloid, though, I don't care about any exact points. Okay. Questions?